Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, the year in news from the perspective of two editorial cartoonists who will discuss the big stories of 2014, one drawing at a time. It's our yearly cartoonist special next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. At the end of each year, we look back at the top news events of the preceding 12 months through the eyes and ink dripping pens of two political cartoonists. And joining us tonight for our annual cartoonist special are Steve Benson of the Arizona Republic and local cartoonist Brian Farrington. Good to have you both here. Good Thanks for joining. Here. Good to see you again. I came over for this interview and all I got was this free water. Yes, that's it. That's actually all you got. And Cheers. You got more than the rest of us. Hey, what kind of year was it for a cartoonist? Oh, man, it was like 360 kaleidoscopic, frenzied craziness. It was, I thought it was a great year. You know, every year it you was, think it can't top the last one, but it, but it does. We had a lot this year, internationally, nationally, uh, Ebola virus. I mean, you know, everything. It was a big, big year. Optimistic? Ne more negative than positive? Was it a, a darker year for cartoonists? Uh, I think it's been a darker year for, say, the Obama administration uh, and all the uh, issues out of that. It may, you know, the economy's maybe looking a little bit better. Uh, so, you know, uh, those issues will come. I mean, we're always going to have our plates full. Yeah, yeah. What would we don't think? care how positive the news yeah, is. Yeah, we don't it's really care. It's our job to turn it inside out and take it down to depression level. <laughs> well, I, but I was going to, that's what I'm going to ask, though. I mean, is, did you have to take it far down, or was it already at depression the wound, level? The, 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 the motto is, after the battle, you go down and stab the wounded. I mean, that's basically what we do. That's so, my line. Yes, uh, I, think okay. it, I think he said it back in 1750. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, it's interesting because during these, uh, you know, uber... Um, you know, cattle prodded midterm elections where everybody gets, you know, up their wazoo about something. It's amazing to see how intense and negative it gets. I mean, I just got a letter the other day saying I was dividing the planet with my cartoons. I thought, really? Wow. Could you read my signature on it? The uh, pen is mightier <laughs> than the, the flame Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and see just how mighty the pen was this year with we get to your cartoonists. And we start with the uh, VA scandal, and uh, this was started, really originated, right here in Phoenix. Yeah. Yes, and despite what CNN <laughs> says, we at the Arizona Republic actually broke this story. What did and CNN say? They're, that they're claiming they broke it, but they didn't. But it's, uh, yeah, it's been, you know, we've got this list, this double list, this electronic list that was, you know, in the shadows of, of you know, uh, of all the people who had died uh, or died, you know, while waiting for care. And then you had this uh, manufactured list of supposedly everybody getting equal access and, and, and ready treatment. It was a, a scandal that just rocked. Yeah, it was, it was really a, a kind of a black eye for Arizona. I mean, uh, you know, uh, especially at home state of John McCain, with such a war hero. But uh, And we, we have Eric Shinseki stepped down. Right. Yeah, you know, and I didn't know that Shinseki had actually lost in combat half of his foot. And I remember doing a tar tunes thing where he was still standing and people thought I was making fun of him. <laughs> oh, goodness. But, you know, he, he, he dug right. himself into the grave on that and, one. And, Brian, you've got the, uh, the, the, the Korean veteran, you know. Yeah, it's sad. I mean, uh, hopefully uh, the scandal will weed out any problems. And, that, I mean, we need to treat our veterans as best we can. And this is a really, really a black eye. And, and Steve, with your, your four-panel thing here with the, the guy that was uh, the, the punchline there at the end, how much can, can you do a punchline on something like the VA scandal? I mean, how far do you go on something like this? Well, it's interesting that uh, the resistance from a lot of vendors, not a lot, but a few to me was, listen, you can't prove it, that, that you know, where's the smoking gun? And it was all borne out in the end. As tough as the cartoons and some of the initial commentary seemed to be, it was all focused on, you know, uh, yeah. the scandal. And why did it take so darn long for them yeah. to get rid of the VA head here in, in Phoenix? I mean, this, uh, this was, and not only was it here in Phoenix, apparently this is a systemic problem. Right. That goes all the way to the top of a Channel 8 and then to other <laughs> places see. around the country. Yeah, okay, uh, let's move on. <laughs> uh, we go to immigration and the executive action. Some refer to it as an executive order, but they're wrong. It's an executive action. Oh, yeah? What, are we in Civics 101, teacher? I mean, what's the difference? Oh, uh, but anyway, we'll get to that later. 
Obama's an emperor, Obama's the king, Obama's anti-constitution, blah, 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 blah. Listen, Bush and Reagan were issuing their own executive orders, yeah. actions or whatever, back in the day. And I, I don't believe the uh, GOP was sitting on its whoopee cushion over that. Well, the G uh, GOP got their f feathers ruffled when they got the Feliz Navidad Christmas card from the White House this year. <laughs> uh, they're definitely up in arms about it, and they'll make it an issue uh, going into the 2016 I didn't race that, but I, that had a tinge of color to that joke that I thought was totally inappropriate. <laughs> All right, thank uh, you. And get, and get off my lawn. This is uh, this is this has to do with the, the problem down on the border there in, in uh, Texas, where all these kids are being sent across the border, uh, you know, by their parents on their own, you know, to meet yeah. up with family uh, stateside, and all these people going apoplectic, whether it's in South Texas or in Oracle, they want to, you know, put them under, uh, you know, <laughs> quarantine for maybe having not, you know, changed their shoes the last day or something. And, and then, you know, uh, I think uh, the governor, uh, not caring about being reelected re now, can kind of play the game however she wants. But, uh, you know, she, uh, Jan Brewer seems to be up and down. She's really tough on, you know, CPS and things like that. But then, uh, you know, she waffles on a whole bunch of, she's never really consistent. I think it's her, her inner staff that is her inner child. Well, I think uh, the problem with that is, I think Doug Ducey going into it is going to be just as bad on those issues as she has been. Uh, you think so? I think so. I mean, Why do you think that? Well, I mean, he's, he's in many respects more conservative than she was. So I yeah. think, I think and that's you know, he has worse hair than you do. Uh, and that's hard for Thank me you. to say. Thank you. But, uh, you spoke of uh, Governor Brewer. Uh, obviously, 1062 was in the news, oh, and uh, she definitely came back and uh, Kathy took Harrod, care of business. Know, I tell you, I mean, she's like, you know, the, vi the virus that won't go away. But this was actually such a patently unconstitutional move where you can deny people equal protection under the 19th, uh, under the 9th, excuse me, uh, we'll get to it in a minute, under the 14th <laughs> Amendment, uh, based upon your own religious preferences. Well, I don't want to tweet, treat them equally because God tells me not to. So there, and you need a boo-boo. I've had actually readers call me and say my religious views trump the Constitution. Well, I think any any uh, super conservative religious Bible literist would believe that, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's pretty dangerous. And well, we, that's why the founders said, "Hey, we're not going to have any more of this. We had this in Europe for hundreds of years." And we have, uh, of course, Kathy Herod uh, marching off to a war. Is that what that is? Onward, Christian soldiers. Is that what we're trying to get to with onward, Christian soldiers here? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I thought that's what we were talking about. I was way ahead <laughs> no, of it. No, I'm sorry. I didn't, <laughs> okay. mean, to, didn't mean to interrupt yeah. your thoughts there. Yeah, she's you know onward Christian soldiers, okay. and she's just a goof. Just okay, a now we're Kathy, gonna, thank you so much. We're going to talk about uh, executions in Arizona, Brian. Yeah, another story that went national that started here in Arizona, like uh, like a lot of uh, stories this year. Um, you know, apparently it was not a pretty sight uh, what uh, the, the uh, inmate had to go through. There's got to be a better better way. Um, yeah, the better way is to end execution. Well, I mean, th that's... I've that's, actually seen a yeah. live execution. I, I would not want to see an execution. Uh, end up being a dead guy, but it was live at the time. He was <laughs> dead in about four minutes. This was back when they, they knew what the concoction of the of the chemicals would be, and it was a swift death, okay? Now, because Europe won't produce these uh, poisons for us anymore, and there's nobody in the United States who will do it either, it's basically a laboratory experiment with every... This is yeah, not... And it, a, and it's, this it, is violates the eighth... Amendment. See, I got that one right. The Eighth Thank Amendment. Thank you, Professor Cruel Benson. Yeah. Getting that right. <laughs> um, but but as far as the death penalty, situations like this, do you think that some conservatives, some pro-death penalty well, you know, type of change I, in the Personally, I've always been kind of on the fence about it. Uh, I, you know, I, I, if I saw an execution, I'd probably change my mind. Uh, it, it's not life in prison is probably a worse punishment than death no, if you really not. think about it. No, it's not. Actually, it's cheaper to put somebody in prison for life. That's what People I said. People say. Well, well, but it's cheaper. It's actually cheaper. People say these, uh, these, uh, you know, well, death cheaper. Penalty, it's probably uh, it's, it's probably, more expensive after all the appeals. But I mean, psychologically, it's, it's more of a punishment to sit in a jail cell for thirty years. Yeah, but that's not the that's not the purpose of, of punishment. But fiscally, it is cheaper. Yeah. yeah it, uh, all right. Uh, the purpose of the show is to show cartoons. So let's continue. Oh, aren't we getting? Snarky? Yes, we are. And uh, Ferguson. I mean, Ferguson was all over the place. Uh, you got the two figures here, uh, Benson. Uh, yeah, despite talk evidence to, to the this. contrary, Steve drew a great cartoon about it. I yes. love that cartoon, despite um, all the evidence to the contrary. Well, um, um, actually. 
what I was concerned about was the abuse of the process. People said the rule of law is the grand jury. The grand jury process was No, abused. agreed, agreed. That, that a they prosecutor put in front of a grand jury. indicts ham sandwiches because that's what he's supposed yes. to do. Yes. And any prosecutor worth their salt can do that. Then it goes to trial in an open court where you go A against B, you know, defense against prosecution. The prosecutor here... Well, he was passing the book. He shouldn't even uh, have put it in front of a grand jury. He shouldn't even have uh, done Yeah, but once he no did, he there. should have done what prosecutors do in these situations and that is to d direct the grand jury to an indictment. He just did a document dump on him. Well, he was goes, passing the buck. He didn't want the repercussions had it gone the wrong way. Welcome to Missouri. Uh, yeah. Brian, uh, happy faces getting... What, what are you saying in this? Community? Well, you know, I mean, they put on a, you know, the, uh, the Al Sharptonization of these uh, kinds of uh, uh, issues. Um, what does you know, that despite mean? the fact that... What does uh, that mean? Despite the fact that there was three autopsy reports, despite the fact that the grand jury discovered that many of the witnesses were unreliable, they tried to paint a picture of this that wasn't entirely accurate. And what about, you know, even Pharrell, the, uh, the musician said, you know, uh, what about the bullying that, that Michael Brown had done? No one takes any responsibility. They want to paint this kid as an innocent victim who didn't do what he said, that he would never do that. Yet, you, a few minutes the later, he was choking on a... Uh, in, the, in the grand jury testimony, now that we've got a document dump on that, we know what went on in the jury process. There were so-called eyewitnesses lying, fudging, making things up on both sides, which then means that be, the way you figure this out is not for the prosecutor to argue for the defense and dismiss it, but take it to trial. That's what should have happened. Well, it was, it was politicized, and, and, and it shouldn't have been. Well, indeed. Indeed, it not only politicized, whether or not you thought it should have been, it was politicized, and it gave way to protests, rising national protests. And they're going around the country, exactly right. I well, mean, there have been uh, other, other incidents on the heels of that, the, the case in New York, which was just yeah, the opposite. Had, they yeah, should have indicted Eric on that. Gardner, you know. I mean, you know, not, you had a body cam, and the trouble was on a civilian right. and, and, and instead of a cop. And... Here was, here was this guy saying 17 times, I can't breathe, and the officer says, well, I got up as soon as I could when he started saying that. Well, the camera yeah. proves otherwise. And, and this, this, will, this will motivate all uh, municipalities to, to put cameras on their police officers, and they should. For, for this kind of reason. Well, yeah. it's the price of justice. People say it's going to be too expensive, but um, no, I think All right, it's back to the idea of what you can and draw, what you can't draw, and how you can draw it. Something like Ferguson, something like Eric, how, how, how sensitive do you have to be to those sorts of things? Well, in the case of uh, 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 Eric in uh, New York, there was an iconic image of the police tackling him and, and the handout, and that was a very iconic image, and people recognized it, and that, that was portrayed a lot uh, in cartoons and images and things like that. And you, you want to capture that without, you know, of course you have to watch, you know, other areas of sensitivity but well that's why you know. I use the statue you're talking about icons and I made it into an African-American woman so you take the issue of race you combine it with an iconic right uh, you know image that so many people relate to and then you have the cops you know beating it to the ground on we move to the elections uh, they did happen uh, this year in case you you missed it yeah and, uh, the, the midterms uh, were, uh, were uh, kind of tough know, there a, Brian. A head in the bed like the godfather uh, and, and to Obama and uh, you know, which, which may ultimately be a curse because now the Republicans have two years to screw it up before the 2016 elections, which undoubtedly... Already they're wielding like... They're, undoubtedly uh, they will. They're uh, like a soft taco on a hot Phoenix afternoon. They, they, they're not taking Obama to task over immigration. That wasn't in this omnibus the spending bill that they just passed. Right. And, and, and uh, there's some other things where they've backtracked on and the Tea Party's going crazy. Welcome, Mitch McConnell, to the world of ruling your yeah. own herd. Uh, welcome, Steve Benson, to Arizona's number one voting group, which apparently doesn't vote. Yeah, uh, the independents now outnumber, uh, which is, you know, traditionally, uh, you know, fair, traditional fair for Arizona, or belligerent independents. Uh, they outnumber the Republicans and the Democrats, and they don't vote. Yeah. So it's, yeah. And uh, also regarding the election, Prop 122, um, you know, we, we keep hearing more and more about this, this new confederacy going on. Do you buy into the new <laughs> confederacy? The argument for this is we can declare any law unconstitutional if it violates our constitution. The good well, this people? Is, this, is, this is Jefferson Davis all over again. <laughs> I mean, you know, we will unilaterally just kind of saw ourselves off and float off to uh, Hawaii. Oh wait, that's part of the country too. You know, one of the uh, one of the aspects of the local election, the Arizona election, was uh, Diane Douglas winning the uh, superintendent yeah. of public instruction and Common Core. Well, she got into office saying that she was going to repeal it. Of course, she has no power to do so. Uh, but you know, it shows you how informed the voters and the people that voted for her were. But uh, you know, I think a lot of parents are a little. Uh, you know, there's a lot of blowback on Common Core because they can't figure it out quite yet, because of the the teaching methods are a little um, complicated as opposed to the way we grew up learning. 
Um, I, th I think that what they're trying to achieve is, is good, but there was a recent article this week in the New York Times about how a lot of um, uh, teacher organizations across the country are actually blowing back on it as well because they're seeing that teach uh, the kids are, you know, they're turning off to these subjects when because of the, the teaching method underlying in Common Core, particularly with math. Uh, the, the underlying uh, core here is to synchronize a platform for education, standardize it across the board, and it's not communist. It's not the communistic core. It's not socializing education. It's a way of of, of unifying our approach to teaching. And uh, there are a lot of thoughtful teachers who uh, are in favor of it. And Diane Douglas is uneducated. Now she's not the head of our <laughs> education in the office. Uh, one last uh, election note here, and this was this the, the Hoopenthal situation must have been just like shooting fish in a barrel for someone like you. <laughs> I tell you, this guy is was like, that a snort laugh you just yeah, did there? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm snorting right. Hoopenthal. Yeah, he's sitting in his underwear in the dark of night in front of his computer, cackling as he's sending out these anonymous. Uh, and this has been going on for a few years. I mean, my gosh, what was he thinking? Excuse me. He's a Republican leader. He wasn't thinking. <laughs> ISIS, world events. Uh, I, I guess the hooded figure is just, he's every, everywhere. He's got him there for Thanksgiving. We're going to see him uh, there on a golf course here in a second or so with you, Brian. I mean, this, yeah. he's oh. everywhere. Yeah, I had somebody say this is the most tedious cartoon I've ever drawn. <laughs> Why? Because I showed the, uh, the American Turkey as, as, as the country. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, it was a quick hit, but still. I mean, it's, well, it's, I mean, it's, th it's, that that image of the uh, uh, what do they call him? Uh, he has a nickname. The guy, the guy. Uh, Bob. Uh, I think uh, no, a Britain Bob or British Bob or something. No, they they really do nickname. But uh, you know that that image has been sadly has become iconic as well, and people know what it means and they recognize it and. Uh, um, it's, it's played uh, havoc on, you know, Obama's foreign policy, that image. Yeah, Nero, uh, Obama as Nero. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, uh, well, is, that, is that too easy for a cartoonist? I mean, the, f the fiddling Nero thing? Yeah, I've I never mean, seen this before. Well, you haven't seen Nero sitting on a gas can, and that's where I beat you. <laughs> so don't give me all your gas. But listen, uh, it, it got to a rocky start, got off to a rocky start, but apparently now ISIS can't move around. I mean, we've been relentlessly bombing them, and so now you get these lone wolves in Australia trying to, you know, take over a cafeteria or, or something. So yeah. I, I think that it's uh, morale is diminishing, but this is a long slog. This will be and, years. And one last note on this: you've got the uh, the ISIS as Hitler. Uh, well, routine. yeah, I know, and, and the Holocaust is unique in, in the history of the world, particularly, of course, for the the six million Jews who were exterminated. But when you get this genocidal maniac who has the same mindset as the Aryan Brotherhood did yeah. of basically taking over the world and right. indiscriminately killing everybody who's not with you. You've got Hitler, you know, I'm back, that kind of a mindset. Yeah. All right, uh, lower oil, oil prices are back, lower gas prices are back. That, that's, not, that's not a bad thing. Enjoy it while it thing. lasts. Uh, you know, you know and, and OPEC is in a panic, uh, at least initially, because their prices are falling, but I think they have a strategy where they're going to let them crash so it wipes out and bankrupts all the uh, smaller uh, uh, people around. But that's uh, 10 years ago, they said that you know, our oil reserves would be gone pretty soon. And then mm -hmm. we've had this, this uh, fracking industry that, that is uh, a boom in that. And uh, uh, that's, that's contributed largely to the... Uh, and that's why we're having communities around the country where fracking, you know, is going on. So, the, you're, the, so your tap water's a little warm. The, I mean, the frolicking <laughs> frackers the deal, are you know? creating, uh, you know, th these swarms of earthquakes as the strata settles, as they break Shake, it up to get, roll, I mean, you know, to, to get to this stuff. But, 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 but they are getting big fat checks, so that is uh, mitigating some yeah, of the, the uh, typical terrible line. devastation. You know, as long as it produces jobs, let's go ahead and just kind of frack the environment. But um, that's, a, that's a play on his cartoon thanks right for, there. Thanks for using that tired <laughs> old yeah, metaphor boy, once again. Yeah. Okay, uh, we got a toothless bear here. We got Russia and sanctions and a toothless bear. Well, you know, uh, in hindsight, it looks like that uh, toothless bear of our sanctions is actually having an effect. While the electricity is still on in Russia, Putin is now going on air and saying it's all the imperialist fault. So uh, the, the Russian people are becoming more dis uh, disaffected uh, and, 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 and disappointed the, in Putin. The next one I, I need to ask you to explain because it's, it's an unnerving uh, sight and it's, uh, it's disquieting <laughs> and it, I can't quite figure it out. I think this is what, the, the Keating Five was nothing. Well, uh, if they were all dressed up in skirts, maybe it would have been something. But anyway, here you got Putin, who's been sanctioned, right? And, um, and Putin then imposed a sanction on McCain saying, you can't come to my country. And McCain says, oh, yeah, well, it's an honor to be sanctioned by you. Oh, yeah, well, it's an honor, it's an honor to be sanctioned by the imperialists. So you got these, these two beauty queens. Wait, uh, real quickly, when you draw something like this, do you, you just look at it and chuckle? 
I mean, do you chuckle at your own work sometimes? <laughs> I hope John. He's McCain, the only one, by the way. <laughs> I hope only John one chuckling. Chuckle at this. This guy has. He was born without a humor gene. I mean, he he, he cut off uh, contact with our paper for years. So There's a cartoon on. Brian, it. Uh, Ebola virus. Panic has stricken the world. We're all going to die of Ebola. Uh, that was the big sort of fear this year. It's been the bird flu in the past. It's been other, you know, in the other diseases. And now it's Ebola. Um, you know, uh, it's it's one of those things that grips the nation. The media picks up on it and runs with it. No. Uh, Did you notice the shape of the Ebola virus? It's got a double loop in it. It's got like M I C K E Y. Uh, there you go. There you go. That's my idea. Okay. That's my fracking <laughs> idea. And, and and so I, you know, drawing Mickey Mouse uh, ears on Obama was great. Plus, yeah. putting pink and blue in that thing was just it was kind of. Grody, but I was not very impressed with the rollout of the uh, Obama's uh, approach to Ebola. Were you very impressed with the way CNN never stopped covering that missing plane? Uh, what missing plane? I mean, we've all forgotten. <laughs> we've already about forgotten about the <laughs> flight number and everything. I, I think they're still out there, kind of uh, trolling. Well, like Gilligan's board. Island somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I did a cartoon. Hey, Amelia Earhart on an island, you know. All right, uh, let's move on to, oh boy, okay, Bill Cosby, uh, this again, this is like shooting fish in a barrel for you, this is, uh, but again, this is a touchy subject, you can't So be, to speak. Can't, yeah. yeah. But uh, uh -huh. what's been going on here, of course, is the tragedy of it all, is you've got these women who I believe have actual legitimate claims. Yeah, the more these, they come out, the more the story is, 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 is consistent. becoming Teflon. But the, the uh, trouble is the statute of limitations yeah. has expired. There's maybe yeah. only one case that perhaps has some... Well, this because the story, person was a, a I mean, minor. from my generation, I was a teenager in the 1980s, and I grew up watching The Cosby Show and mm -hmm. Fat Albert and all that. And the guy, the guy was one of the most beloved, trusted figures. I mean, he had Cronkite type of status where mm -hmm. universally beloved and trusted. And, you know, at first these stories came out, and they, they'd been known for a while, and they were kind of dismissed as Back some rich guy getting targeted yeah. and paying them off to make them go away. Right. But now that, that the point where it's, it's to the point of no return, uh, especially this last model and towards mm -hmm. the end of this year that just came out, Beverly Johnson. I mean, she's very credible, and right. it's, it's really sad. Well, the thing is that despite the Statue of Liberty running out, there's a consistency yes. to the independent claims made of by these women, separate and apart from each other. They're not colluding on this. Right. All right, uh, we move on. Another uh, disquieting topic, the NFL and uh, uh, spousal abuse. Uh, just... The NFL had a big problem with this, and it's really not going away. No, it's not. I mean, uh, you know, the Ray Rice, Baltimore uh, Ravens fiasco where he clocked her. Everybody knew what he did, and then the video got out. And yeah. then they really knew what he did. And that's when, you know, Ro uh, Roger Goodell uh, got, uh, uh, started feeling the, the, the heat. But um, his lack of consciousness, his kind of shrugging the thing off, she, he drops her like a sack of potatoes yeah, it then was, dra it was drags her unconscious out the door but the NFL's response really wasn't so much about uh, curbing domestic violence as it was keeping their sponsors and the, the money bags happy. And that's yeah. That's the trouble is the sponsors and the money bags are saying we're walking. Yeah. You got to do something. That's why. That's the only reason they did uh, anything. Yeah. Real quickly, a craft question: When you when you do a big NFL football play, you have to yeah. make a tiny head, don't you? I mean, you just have to do that for the humor aspect. Is that am I am I correct on uh, that? Yeah, it's just exaggeration. It's yeah. it plays funnier, and I didn't. Have, I ran out of space on the top. If you want to <laughs> okay. add another I just so. I see things like that, and I go, I know why he did that. It's like with you know with a Chris Christie or something. You, you got to sure. make them huge as opposed yeah, sure. to yeah. like every time Steve draws me, he draws me with a giant head. Yeah. Uh, well, this is your this is a picture of you before you grew your hair out. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. Uh, our, our last cartoon is a sad one because Wall Boy uh, passed ho, on ho, to ha, the ha, he, he, ha. yeah to the greater uh, kids show in the yeah. sky. Wait, yeah. Talk about. I mean, just well, just doing you know, the cartoon. I, I wasn't here during uh, you know. My formative years, thank goodness. Well, well, so, I was a generation that grew up on Ladmo's teat. I mean, we watched Walsh yeah, Ladmo but, but constantly. The connection, the, no, the that deep was a bad love of there between <laughs> yes, this was. valley and, and that show was, was amazing. Yeah. And it's still there, and of course, well, the it, fans it, are It influenced people like in. Steven Spielberg, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Spielberg grew up, and he was very influenced, which surprised me they haven't ever done sort of a show, like a movie about it. It would make a great script. Well, you think about Alice Cooper, The yeah. Tubes, yeah. Uh, Steven Spielberg, people right. that have kind of uh, sure. blossomed outside of Stevie whatever Nicks, box. Stevie uh, Nicks. Uh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. They all uh, at least were aware of. And, and, and Arpaio stole the name, I guess, when you go to jail, you get a Ladmo bag. Yeah. That's what they call the meal down there. Yeah. So he, he you know, everyone, everyone the wins. The Ladmo bag is, the real one is much more nutritious than whatever he <laughs> yeah. All right, we got about a minute or so left here. As far as the, the changing nature of doing cartoons, has technology just changed everything about this craft? Well, I mean, the fundamentals are always the same. Uh, Steve steals my ideas, and that's all <laughs> be the same. But, uh, 
fundamental. Uh, you know, I mean, Steve just came around to the digital age. He just bought a computer and uh, uh, put I away his man, horse and buggy, and he got into the digital I, it age. It adds but. three, literally three to four hours of, to my day just to color the dang thing. I mean, it's cool to, to do color. I mean, that's the way. Well, all, all newspapers want to go on the web. Everything has to be full color and digital and web. And there was a, a period of time over the last 10 years where, unfortunately, a lot of the editors got on the, the animation kick. And we did that here, I think, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And they had these guys chained to their, their boards doing full-length animations once a week. And it, they were wanted to you know, end it all. They didn't want to do that. But It's, it's kind of tough because uh, as they're cutting back staffing positions at, at yeah. the, 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 the Dead Tree Society, uh, in other words, the newspaper industry, then those who are left standing are now sitting all the time doing extra work. And so there's kind of this burnout. But, uh, well, you're overpaid to begin with, so they need to give you more stuff to do anyway. So. Yeah, well, I, you, need the, you need the money to keep your hair trimmed, buddy. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll just about do it, I think. Oh, yeah? Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. good just to have for you. men, right here. Just for men. Good huh? to have you both here. <laughs> Thanks for the cartoons. Have a wonderful 2015. Thanks, Thank Ted. You. And that is it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a great evening. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.